So thank you so much for uh, coming to uh, see the latest in the series of 100 Years of Coconuts um, question and answer session with Cambridge United Legends. And uh, today we've got a man, according to my records, supplied by uh, Mr. Bennett, thank you so much. We've got a man who played 312 games for the U's, plus 22 sub appearances. And I'll tell you something, there wasn't one of those games in which he didn't give his all for Cambridge United. He scored 49 goals for the U's. He's a multiple player of the year award winner. Um, he's played as an emergency goalkeeper three times. And twice, he kept a clean sheet. Is that, uh, yeah, nine stitches in your head wound without anaesthetic. That was against Berry in all the streets out Remember that? <laughs> all right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm uh, uh, coconuts welcome to a used legend, uh, King of the Abbey, Paul Wampus. <laughs> now, um, the floor will be open for questions very shortly, but as seems traditional on these occasions, I get to ask the first question. And Paul, um, the first question is, I didn't say this game, but apparently after you scored a penalty home against Port Vale, you were so busy doing some kind of elaborate celebration that the ref kicked off without you, is that right? Now, I recall that one, yes he did. Um, what happened was it's at the top end there and uh, we had like a little deal between all the players. So whoever scored the first goal had to do the elephant celebration. I don't know if anyone remembers that one. And I think, I, I'm not sure, but I think it was something to do with shooting the stars or, or you, you had to try and get on telly basically and all the lads come up with this. We did it in training. But we were too busy celebrating by the dugout and once we crossed the halfway line, we heard the whistle. We saw all looked across. Before we knew it, they were attacking. We just our goalkeeper stood there. But to be fair to the lads, we did get across the bridge quite quickly, and I think someone got a tackling, and uh, yeah, we were okay. But that was that was all, it was all to do with the TV series of shooting stars. And I was surprised to score the penalty on that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can we have a first question then? Tom will come amongst you with the uh, roving mic, or the kind of roving. Any hands up? It's like school, you've got to put your hands up. Go on in, Tom. Give me a chance. Hi, Paul. Can you, uh, can you give us your very first impressions of uh, Cambridge and the Abbey Stadium? So my very, very first impressions when I came here, a um, bit of a story behind it, um, wasn't actually me playing for Cambridge, it was playing against Cambridge. Um, my first ever game, starting game in professional football was uh, actually out here. I played for Oxford United against Cambridge, um, the John Beck team, the, the big strong bully boys, as I, I suppose to say. I was only 17, I was only a little boy, and big deal done, they gave me a nice black guy. Um, so my first impressions was ouch. Um, but no, it was very good. Uh, you were top of the league, or Cambridge were top of the league, I say you because I was playing for Oxford. Um, and I believe he drew one all, which was a very good result for us um, against a very, very good team on the side. Um, but when I came as a player, um, it, it was a club that I loved. Obviously, it grew on me. Um, you know, I came on loan, and after those first two months on loan, it's a club that I wanted to join. And uh, obviously, I'd like to spend so many years here. All the energy you got from United Paul. Do you think you scored more than anyone else? Oh, I think you did. And you went in there where no one else would go. Did you ever wonder if you were going to get injured? And what was it like to play the national by your side? Um, start with the end. I was lucky to play with some very, very good players here. Ash is one of them. Um, Obviously what he did his career, once he left here, fair play to the bloke, he done magnificent. Uh, so playing next to Ash was fine, it was good. We had a very good midfield, you know. Alex Russell as well, we had Neil Musto coming in. Um, we had a group of us that were very, very good. Uh, and it was a pleasure playing with everyone in that team. Uh, did I ever think I'd get back and get injured? No, I think if, if you ever get to that stage where you're worried about getting uh, you're never ever going to do your job properly. Um, so, going in for attack, it was the way I was, I was always going to do that, it didn't matter. I saw the ball, that's all I saw. And 
the unfortunately those people in the way you may get hurt either. It, it's just one of those things. And, uh, did you say I scored a few in head? I think. Did you say I scored a few headers? How many penalties did I get? Headers did I get? Yeah. Um, did I get caught? Did you say I scored 49? 49 goals. Oh, yeah. it was 50. <laughs> 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 There you go, see, I was great. No. Um, gosh, I, I would assume at least half of them maybe. I don't know, I don't know. It was just some of the, it was one of my strengths. I was quite good in the air, you know. It, it's one of those that, I think Roy used to say I was influential in both boxes. Corners against, corners four, three kicks against, three kicks four. Um, like I say, I just saw the ball and that was it, I just went for it. So, and I, I had a reasonable spring and uh, yeah, I was forced to score a few goals. And a few I do stick out, a few I do. Next question, please. Paul, what did you think with John Pegg's part too? Paul's always for B45. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, to be fair to John, what he did here, in his first spin, magnificent. And the, you know, you can't, no one can ever take that away from the man. And, uh, I had experience with him, I don't know, it was him that got rid of me, so it was him that got me to Cambridge really. Um, I was at Lincoln, I was signed by a man called Sam Ellis, um, and he's a young lad. He, uh, he, I broke my foot actually in pre-season and uh, never got to play, I played for 15 minutes for him I think. Then Steve Wicks came in, he lasted 8 games, and then uh, John turned up at Lincoln, and uh, as a lot of managers do, just went to death. And, uh, for me, I was fortunate. I went to Woking on loan for a couple of months. They wanted to sign me. Um, that was non league. And uh, John then wanted something like 100 or 1,000 pounds from Woking. Obviously, they couldn't afford that. He was just trying to get some money. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, Cambridge United were looking for a player. And uh, I came here and spent the last two months. And had a wonderful two months. And that was my first, my very last game on that loan was where I. Uh, when he goal, after I think three or four minutes, Scott Barrett got his eye. And we won that one 1-0. One and uh, I loved him, I loved him. And uh, Tommy said he wanted to sign me, his fingers crossed, could they sign me? And I came in on a free and uh, loved him. So when John came back, I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> this you do, he, he's already cleared the decks once. Um, we were always running with the job, mate. We didn't matter if the ball ain't doing or not. Yeah. But to be fair, I had a phone call, I mean, not a lot of people know this one. I had a phone call um, to you, know, that's the first time I ever said this, actually. I had a phone call by uh, Reg on the night before, whether it's I can't remember the night, the night that John Beck, next morning, was announced as manager. Um, and, and I had. Uh, and he said, I'd like to see you in the office pool, quarter away. Good morning. I thought, oh no, uh oh, uh oh. Was that me out the door or what? I didn't know. I didn't have a clue what was going on. Uh, I came at the top four cabins and uh, David Priest came out. And uh, I said to Priest, he, I just went to Becky, and he went. So I walked in the office, the manager's office, says, John sat there, there was Shane Wesley behind him, and the chairman sat there. And uh, I said, morning, John. Yes, you do. And he, he had this little expression on his face, it was very much like, oh, hi Paul, how are you? I've watched you play, blah, blah, blah. And he, he basically just said, oh, I made a mistake at Lincoln. And I said, well, it was a good mistake for me, I've got no, no grudges on that. He said, I need your help, people have heard stories about me. Um, and I'm thinking, yeah, they're all true. <laughs> So he said, after training, can you arrange to get every player over the next three days to see me in half hour spells? You go first. And I went, okay. He said, well, I want a meeting in the Harris suite at the time in an hour with all the players. Can you arrange it? So I said, yeah, not a problem. So go in the change room. They're all sat there. And, uh, the lads looked at me. And went, they, were going, they all knew it better than my priest then. And uh, he's walked here. And I said, look, I've got to go for a meeting, guys, in the Harris suite. This we do. All sat in a circle, the stories are still flying about, and uh, John walks in with Shane, and uh, I'm sat there. He said, hi guys, he said, you probably heard all the stories about me. He said, some may be true, some may be not. I'm sure Paul said a lot of bad things about me. My mouth just dropped, I thought, well, you know, well, that's not a good start, is it, between the manager and the captain? But um, in fairness, you know, I had it. All Priestley looked over me when you're 
bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great, but no, he was fine. And, and while he was here, he, done, he, he was good. And I can't fault him for his organisation of skills. And I learned a lot from him during that. So I'm not going to bad mouth him, you know, and he, he got mouth for this football club. And, uh, you know, fair play to him. I want to squeeze a, a question in there, because while you talk about managers and, and Becky, you played under four different bosses here. Tommy, Tommy Taylor, Roy, Roy Knight, John Beck and John Taylor. Um, and Roy, Roy McFarland actually considered him with glowing praise and said he is the example. Whenever he puts his shirt on, you know what you're going to get from him. Um, just a, Wondered, what, what, what era did you enjoy playing most at the Abbey under which manager? I don't think that's any secret. I went on record a long time ago and uh, without... That's what I'm always saying, without doubt. <laughs> uh, without doubt, it would be Roy. Roy was a um, different class. In, not just to me, but for the team, for the club. Um, what he bore as a man, um, off the pitch as well as on the pitch, was... Uh, was brilliant. I know that a lot of players who didn't get to play were always going to criticise him. If you're not playing, you're not going to be happy with that manager. But um, a lot of people don't remember when Roy first came, he dropped me. I was in the reserves and uh, I thought, like, oh no, here we go. Another thing, why am I out again? But um, he saw something in me in a few weeks afterwards and put me in the team and then under Roy learned so much and went from strength to strength and made me captain. And, uh, yeah, he done it with Roy. I can never, ever, ever speak highly enough of him. Um, I have to say, as a manager, he was magnificent. It's a very, very sad day that they left the club. But it affected all the players. The players were all heartbroken, to be honest with you. So, we felt like we let him down. He had such a wonderful run with him. Um, his coaching ability was brilliant. His general, his man management was not the same as you know. And uh, under him, I learned so, so much. And uh, I'll be forever indebted to him. I think Cambridge and I as club will be indebted to what Roy did. Uh, what the football he gave the club at the time, because he, he built, which I believe is an excellent team, on a very, very small budget. And, uh, and those team and those players will do anything for each other. And that, that all come from the top. Any other questions, please? Don't say worst manager. <laughs> Did you any decide what you were going to do and go or hold back? How did you decide what you were going to do in midfield during the match? Um, during the match, it was, you know, it, you don't decide prior to a game, you, you know your job. And um, my job it was basically to, well, Roy would always say it was it, it being captain, so there's two types of captain one that would organise and one that would lead by example. Um, I like to think I'd be a bit of both of them, but he always said I led by example. Uh, so my job was my job. There's the ball, I win it. Win it, give it, um, and that was it. Talk to others, encourage others. Um, basically, whoever I was playing against, whoever that man was, he was not going to get the better of whatever happened during that game. Of course, at times, players do, opponents do. Um, but my aim was that whoever I was, whoever I was playing against, you know, I played against players that are way better than me. But during that 90 minutes, they were going to have a hard time, regardless. And uh, that was my job. And, and once I'd done that part, maybe I'd do something else or someone else. But first of all, do your own job, and then that inspires others around you. Uh, how closely have you followed the U since your retirement, and what are your, your thoughts on, on recent successes? It's a very good question, and in truth, I have followed. Um, you know, not, not religiously, I've been back a few times here. Um, I, I live near Oxford, moved back um, there, uh, where I'm from. So, my last two games last year, I went and watched, were both at Wembley. And, you know, people have said to me, oh, I must be all right for you, you got a ticket and that. I didn't, I bought a ticket. I, I sat with the supporters. Um, I took my three daughters with me for the first game um, for the FA Trophy. We went and we enjoyed it. And then, and then on the on, on the uh, playoff final, I went with a very good friend of mine who's uh, a mad you. And uh, we went, we got on the train, we went down, we had a few beers, we had many a few beers with a lot of the supporters that day um, to celebrate getting back in the league. So, um, yeah, I, I do keep my eye on the club. It is a result I will always look for. And from what's happened in, obviously, last year, two Wembley appearances, this season with 
obviously Man United and that. It's fantastic for the club. Financially, it goes without saying, but um, the supporters as well. They're, they're days you never forget. They're days that come few and far between, smaller clubs. And, uh, Days that you get to take your children with you, and, and days I'll never forget. Uh, you know, fantastic. I've never got to play at Wembley, unfortunately, but they were brick building the bloody thing. I had to wear it. <laughs> yeah, but hey, that was a good ground as well. I'm not going to fault that one. But um, special days for players, and like I say, most importantly for sports. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, big hand for the chat. Please, the patron of the. Uh, Thanks very much. That's fantastic. Um, that wasn't the one I gave you to be signed. <laughs> That's wonderful. Luke has uh, got uh, this is one of the prizes for the raffle, which we'll be drawing uh, later tonight at the, uh, the fundraiser. I know this is a flying visit, Luke. Yeah, he's got to shoot off. But thank you so much. You've got me signed, and that'll be one of the prizes in the raffle. Um, you say a few words. No, just um, pleased to get the programme, great to see the ball back here, pleasure to see you, and uh, I hope you all have a good night. Thank you very much, Lou. Cheers. 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 Thanks to Luke. Um, actually, I'll, I'll squeeze another question in. We were talking about you going to goal earlier, Paul, and you, you, you actually started out as a keeper, didn't you? Well, where I used to live, we had a big field in front of the house, and uh, I had a bigger brother. And I think when you're younger, you get picked off, shoved me in goal, he did. All the big boys, you know, I used to go in goal and uh, used to get the ball booted at me. But um, I started, as I say, in goal on my Sunday league team. Um, we had a very good Sunday league team, and I just ended up getting a bit bored. We were winning 10 0 every week, and I wasn't getting a kick. I mean, I think I was about. 13, um, my manager at the time, a lovely lady called Jackie, uh, she was only a young lady, 21 she was, uh, she died, she, she got killed in a car crash, and when that happened, I saw the team change a little bit, and I thought I'm going to go out on pitch now, I, I changed myself, uh, and I went out on pitch, moved to another team, and within six months I was picked up by Oxford United, and that's uh, it's, it's the ball rolled. But my first ever trial with Oxford, I turned up and they said, um, Right, goalkeeper, Paul Wallace, and I'm like, oh, hang on, I'm not in goal anymore. It's for going goal for the first half, play out and pitch on the second half. And uh, they, they slept to me in both, to be honest. They said, yeah, you can do it for both of us. So, uh, and then, yeah, that was, that was how I started. And then played the odd game, um, the youth game. And then when Scott Barrett got injured out here, Tommy Taylor was like, well, who's going to go? It's the days of having some goalkeeper in there, yeah. And I said, I'm happy to. And then, you know, last game of the season, he said, you sure? I said, yeah, no worries. And it's I think it was full. I'm pretty sure it was full. It's all the talent awesome. Um full of yeah, see, you didn't do your homework. I've got me one nil. And uh, yeah, after four minutes, and it, I, I loved it. I did, I enjoyed it. And then the second time Scott got injured, it was half time. He had to come off. He, he done something to his eye, he couldn't see out of it, and then just, everyone had changed, just looked towards me, I went. Here I go again. And I think everyone knew he's had to come out and get a bit warm up going off with these gloves on. And uh, it was just fun. The third time, unfortunately, I think he's seen two. One was my fault. I bought a lap down for a little bit. But yeah, I'm not the worry. Right, any more questions, please? Hands up. I'll talk. Paul, you uh, foolishly said in an interview in the year 2000 that your favourite player was Roy Keane. Would that still be the case, or would you have changed your opinion? I'd probably said, I mean, too, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd probably said Roy Keane at the time, because, again, obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not even trying to get in the same bracket as Roy, but he was a similar player to me, obviously, at, me at a smaller scale. For what he offered Man United, I like to think I offered maybe Cambridge United. So, um, I sort of looked towards that. He was a leader and an inspiration to players around him. And, uh, he, he scored goals. And he, he was a great player. I know what he's done since, maybe off the pitch, maybe not so good, but um, yeah, he was a great player at the time. And if, if I said it in 2000, I meant it in 2000. If you say he's my best player now, I, I don't know. But, you know, at the time, he, he was such an inspiration. And I thought, I thought if I could be similar, to have a similar effect at a smaller scale, 
then I end up bad. Yeah. Come on, there must be more. You've got a lot saying. <coughs> oh, if I get myself a time machine, I will play for anyone here. I can turn my body back 18 years ago. <laughs> 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 um, do you know what? I wish I could play again. It's, it's, it's the best sport in the world. It's a sport I owe so much to. Um, it, you know, it's the club that's led me to be sat in front of you today. And, you know, and I, I, I'm touched that people, you know, I mean, you introduced me to Santa Legend. I was, a, I was a player at Cambridge. That's all I was, a player. And, um, it's a club that feel in my heart and uh, I'll be very proud of it. It's nice though, I've got um, I bought Emily today and I don't know, uh, a little story. Emily, hand wave, hi, there you go. Um, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people remember 15 years yeah. ago. Um, we were on a little bit of a good run at the time and uh, Emily came into this world and she had a lot of little problems that she knows, a little baby, it gave me a lot of stress. She still gives me stress. But to, it, on the way down today, and I said, you're looking forward to it, your dad, I'm so excited. She went, I said, what do you remember then about your dad playing football? She went, I remember eating pies in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, but uh, I said to her today, do you enjoy it? And she said she has. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's little things like that, and occasions that I was able to bring her back today. Um, and, it, you know, things like that, which I will take away, you know, from this club. Just, uh... I just want to allude to that difficult period in your life again, because um, you actually did a lot of fundraising for Adam Brooks and Hinton Brooks, Hinton Brooks Hospital at that time, for the, um, uh, right, and uh, you also, how that came, am I right, the, the infamous, or famous calendar, kit off calendar, naked footballers, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get Paul to talk us through it. We were naked. <laughs> um, it, 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 it was at the same time we did a. Um, is it Q103? Is it still going? Yeah. 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 Q, okay. Well, it was Q103 at the time, and they did a area. I think it was like firemen, policemen, and you know, golf club. And they, they did. They did a special calendar, and it was all for charity. And they approached the football club and said, "Do you guys mind?" And a few of you stripping off. And some of the lads were more than happy to say that no, no, not a problem. It was, when, it, was when, it, was, it was when they then said the five they wanted, and I was one of them. I said to worry about. It. But um, but to be fair to them, I had a phone call not long afterwards, and uh, obviously the press found out about what had happened with Emily. And um, and to be fair to them, they made a phone call to me, and they said it was all about charity and all about raising money for people, and we did do part of it, and uh, they gave five hundred pounds. I remember that, he gave 500 pounds horses to the Scudu unit at Hinchinbrook, so, uh, but yeah, it was fun, and the following season the club picked up on it, and we all did um, individual naked photos, let's say, for another calendar, which, and I do recall when Emily was in the hospital, the nurses found, and they hadn't picked up in all that war. So every time I went in, it was quite embarrassing, but, uh, but yeah.